my first spatchcock chicken on the Oklahoma Joe Highland reverse flow. Welcome back to Comparison Cooking. My name's Kevin and today we're doing spatchcock chicken. Instead of my typical, just throw a rub on it, throw it on the grill and go, I'm going to marinate it and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Let's get to it. I want to wrap this up with two points, taste and smoke temperature. First, let's talk about taste. I scored this a seven out of 10 in the barbecue journal. And the reason for it is it was great. I really liked it. I liked the change up of doing a marinade instead of my typical just rub. But I want to say it like blew me away and this is how you have to do it every single time. I think it's one of those where you put it into the repertoire, right? You want to make sure you're not cooking the same rub every single time. So I really like it from that aspect. It was really good. My wife and I, we chowed down on it. Uh, we thought it was definitely right there with the ones we throw rub on and just go. So I think from a standpoint of, is it better than just using a traditional rub that you'd get prepackaged or make yourself? Uh, no, it's right in line there. 
but it's important to change up and do different things every once in a while, just so you're not doing the exact same thing every single time. I would say the ones I do with a rub probably score a seven out of 10 also. You know, it's chicken. It's not going to blow you away like a brisket might. Uh, some people, they might have that experience, but seven, I'll eat that all day long. Now, the Porcosaurus barbecue sauce. I actually got that from a friend that he's friends with the person that makes it. And at first, it, I didn't really enjoy it as much as like a sweet baby rays, but it's really grown on me because it creates this like sticky and it's perfect for chicken. Cause when you bite into it, you kind of get that barbecue sauce, like stickiness to it. And it's one of my favorite rubs. I'm always reaching or favorite barbecue sauces. I'm always reaching for now. So, you know, if you're thinking of switching up from sweet baby rays or trying something else, maybe check it out. Uh, but that was it on taste. I would say definitely, Try this and let me know in the comments uh, what's your favorite way to do spatchcock chicken. Okay, let's talk cooking temperatures for a minute. I was shooting for 275. I got my Oklahoma Joe right there, and then the temperature came down to about 250, 240 at certain points. And the big difference, you saw me all last year cook on this Kingsford Stockade. The big difference with the Oklahoma Joe that I'm experiencing is when I want to get temp up really quick, it's not a really quick process. It takes, it's really slow and steady to climb, which is very inconsistent from what I hear from other people in our Facebook group. Some people, they, they get it to 325 and they can't get the temperature down. And then other people, you know, they can spike those jumps. So I am still trying to figure out this Oklahoma Joe and what's the right amount of fuel and airflow, all that stuff. So I was very, the big difference I'd say from what I'm used to cooking on, if I wanted to get my Kingsford from 250 to 325, it literally could take like three minutes to jump the temp. But on the Oklahoma Joe, after I dropped temp and trying to climb it back up, it was a very slow process. Um, I'm always cursing the wind because it's blowing so hard and really stoking my fire, I had no wind. You know, I, I cursed the wind for a whole year and now every time I go out there, I have no wind. But today I am recording a, a video and we will have a lot of wind. So maybe that's the big difference. Now spatchcock chicken, I've never dried it out. That's why I love it. You just cut out that backbone and you go. And for me, the chickens always turned out perfect. Roasting a whole chicken, I've dried those out before. You gotta be really careful because it might not get even all over. Spatchcock, boom, done. That's why I love it. Now, my question is, I've seen a lot of videos say, say 275 is the best, 325, 350. I was shooting for 275 and I got the majority of the cook at 275 and even a little lower. It was a little longer of a cook than I wanted, but what is the best temperature for spatchcock chicken. I mean, it's a, a big debate out there. I wanna try 325 because if you cook it fast and encapsulate it, is that going to make it a more juicy bird? Or that 275 that I was going for, was that drying it out a little more? I mean, this wasn't a dry bird, but it wasn't gushing with juice. So that's why I'm curious to know with cooking temperatures with your spatchcock chicken, What's, what have you found to be the magic number to get that perfect bird for you every time? I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button and make sure to share it with a friend that's getting in the backyard and starting to learn this whole process. While you're at it, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you really soon.